What's going on everyone? So a lot of you guys have been watching a lot of my Tesla videos and I really appreciate it. I highlight a lot of the good things, but this video I kind of want to highlight, I guess, the not so good things, the bad things. A lot of these um, quirks are nitpicky, um, but I do kind of expect a, I guess, a higher build quality in a car you're paying a significant amount for. For this, you're around uh, paying 56490 uh, prior to your, um, your tax rebate. So I want to show you guys some things that I don't enjoy about the car. So let's get into it. One thing I've noticed about the car is the paint quality. So if you can see here on the rocker panel, you get a ton of rock chips. Just from driving on the freeway, um, driving on the road, you hear a lot of rock chipping sounds. So this is 2,600 miles of driving right here. A lot of the rock chips have occurred here on the rocker panel. Those white marks there are the rocks hitting it and the paint scraping off. I've thought about PPF before, but I just couldn't justify around like $3,000, $4,000 on a car that's a depreciating asset. You can be buying investments with that, but hey. Over here on the hood, as you can see, uh, I have the red um, painted over a rock chip on the hood. Rock chips tend to hit that. And here on the front bumper, you get a lot of rock chips too because there's no grill protecting the car itself. Paint is, you think it'd be multi-coat, which it is multi-coat and there'll be less chipping, but I've definitely bought some Tesla uh, paint repair kit to paint over over the car itself um, and to kind of not show the, the rock chips itself uh, within the car. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate, but that's one thing, major gripe I have. Over here, we have the, the Chrome Delete. As you can see on the Chrome Delete, um, whenever you go onto a car wash, you get some funky residue and I have to clean it with stainless steel cleaner. Every time I go to the car wash, you get the funky residue out of the, um, the stainless or out of the, the black trim, which is unfortunate because you don't want to be using stainless steel cleaner every time you clean your car. You're paying so much money for the car and you know, you have to use stainless steel cleaner to get the residue out. There you go. You see it right there. And it was way worse before when I didn't uh, clean it and I applied some stainless steel. All right, next we have here is the residue you get from a car wash. Again, you see some condensation building up in the back tail lights of the car. So here as well, you have more condensation on the back tail lights of the car. Whenever you wash the car, you'll notice condensation does build up within the car and it just does not look pretty at all. When it heats up, it does go away, which is nice, but for now, I'm just stuck with it. So, so yeah, what can you do? Next, we have here um, within the car, as you can see, I'm inside the car and the top panels above, you get a lot of like rumbling sounds. So kind of like where that speaker is above, when you drive, you hear a rattling sound whenever you drive and it's just kind of annoying. A lot of it happens in a lot of Teslas and it's really because of the build quality of the car. Uh, especially when you're on the freeway, you hear it pretty loud. I'm getting that fixed tomorrow on um, when I go to the Tesla service center, but it's happened to a lot of people's Teslas. Sometimes when you get it fixed, it doesn't really work and you have to go back again. Next kind of complaint here is the autopilot. So I don't have full self-driving. I just have the normal autopilot. I get a lot of, um, I guess, shadow braking where you brake unexpectedly on the freeway. Um, also, whenever you're driving on the freeway, you're kind of hugging the left side or of, of the freeway and you get really close to the kind of like the edge the, um, the divider of the freeway and you get kind of scared because a lot of times there's like random objects on the floor and there's a kind of a likelihood of you hitting the car as well as kind of in general driving on the freeway you hug the left left side of the lane and you tend to be really really close to another person and the other person keep in mind doesn't have autopilot so they don't stay in the lane perfect um, and it's pretty scary when your car gets really close to another person's car because it could be a car crash still hasn't happened yet fingers crossed but that's one thing I don't enjoy. I wish the car would stay in the middle more of the lane. All right, next we have here, um, another complaint I don't enjoy about the car is the range EPA. So it's not like a gas car where you get 300 miles of range and that's what you get with gas. With this, you have 315 miles of range EPA, but you multiply that by 0.8 and that's your true range of the car because you have to take into account that you're actually using a lot of the battery through accelerating the radio, autopilot, um, using the navigation system, whatever features you may be using is also draining the battery. 
so you truly don't get that full 300 miles of range. Has it been a bother for me? Not yet, maybe for long road trips, but so far, so good. But that's just one gripe I have about that. Next we have here the, the wind noise. I'm not a fan of the wind noise. Keep in mind the car doesn't have an engine. Also, the car is mainly fully glass, so there is a ton of wind noise. It's gotten way better. I've added some things, and the car is pretty quiet so far, but there is a lot of uh, wind noise you do hear when it gets windy. Um, it could be due to the build quality and the car being so full of glass and not having any engine to drown out any of the noise uh, within the drive. Another thing I didn't enjoy about the car was the extremely long wait time. So here is the exact configuration of my Model 3 performance. We got the red paint um, with the white interior as well as um, the Uber turbine wheels which were, were, which were included, white interior. And then as you can see, I'm kind of showing you the car and basically the build of it. It takes extremely long. What I mean was that um, it takes about a few weeks to get your car unlike most dealerships where you basically go in get out and you have the car you want that same day with tesla you gotta place the order for a hundred dollars which is a down payment and then here you have a three to six wait time one hack i did learn was that if you go buy your car at the end of the quarter there are um basically incentives for you to buy like i got free um Free supercharging for a year. Some people got three free full self driving for three months. Um, so if you buy your car at the end of the quarter, that's when you kind of get your car in a few days. So if you buy it like say December 26th, Q1 ends like the 31st, you get your car within five days. Um, same thing with Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Uh, Q4 is when you get those really special treats like the free FSD for three months or the unlimited supercharging for a year just because they're really trying to get the car um, sold uh, as quick as possible. All right, last but not least is the Tesla service center. Uh, for the most part, the people there are great, but when you go there on a super busy, hectic day, it can um, not be the best. Um, sometimes you'll hear that, oh, your problem isn't based on the warranty. I just recently got the car like one, two, three months ago, and now I'm hearing my problem's not covered in a warranty. It's like, come on. So that's one thing I don't enjoy. Um, but if you go to another service center um, that's less crowded, you usually get better service and they'll say it is kind of, but your, your issue is covered under warranty. So the service varies from service center to service center, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> granted, I do know this company is rather new um, and they haven't ironed out all the kinks. So hopefully that gets better as they tend to, as they scale up as a company. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I don't enjoy about the, the car, um, is the service experience. A lot of times also the appointments, you gotta reach out like two or three weeks in advance via the app. And if you get lucky, um, and your issue is able to be fixed through, through a mobile service up on your house, which is great. But sometimes you have to go to the service center and <clears throat> that takes two, three weeks at a time to book in advance and then when you get there, a lot of it um, service will depend on your service advisor, the manager, or how crowded the service center is at the time. So maybe it's just one of the growing pains as the company begins to scale. Um, but I wish that was kind of their service, especially uh, you're paying so much for a, a car. Um, so yeah. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on like the few things I don't enjoy about this car. Other than that, like the car is amazing. It's definitely my most favorite car I've ever driven, but. As you can see, like not everything's gonna be perfect. Um, you're not gonna pay a certain amount and have the perfect car. So I understand that. I am very um, understanding too as the company scales gets bigger, um, build quality is gonna kind of hopefully get better. Um, and there is always growing pains with, with the company um, as, they, as they scale. I know kind of um, places like Lexus, Toyota, they've been around for such a long time. Um, and their their service, their supply chain, their build quality within their vehicles is probably a lot more uh, is a lot more I guess mature. Um, so that's why they can offer like a bit uh, of their service, as well as kind of they're they're more worldwide as opposed to like Tesla. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll be posting more Tesla videos. Um, I really like. I think I'm at 100 subscribers now, so I really appreciate all of you guys. And let's continue to grow this channel. Show you guys this new tech um, that I'm really enjoying and hopefully I can take you guys on this ride. See you later, Jello family. Have a great day.